I'm Diasha. In our previous lesson, we showed how different samples of soil can be tested to find the pH of the soil. In today's lesson, we will be exploring the Stirkfontein Caves, found just west of Johannesburg. This is a site that has attracted a lot of interest because of the discovery of fossils and skeletal remains that date back millions of years. These discoveries have led to this whole area being called the Cradle of Humankind and it is now recognized as a World Heritage Site. Our focus today will not be on the archaeological findings but on the formation of the caves. Here are the outcomes for this lesson. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain the role acids played in the formation of the caves, write chemical equations for the reactions taking place, and critically evaluate human impact on a cave environment. For now, let's go and meet John at the caves to find out more about the wonders of nature. Oh, hi, Diasha. Can you believe that this whole area was once covered in water? The rocks that we find here were actually formed deep underneath the water and settled in layers. One of these layers is the layer called dolomite. After some time, the water retreated and the land changed. There were also changes in the dolomite region underground water started to dissolve calcium carbonate found in the dolomite and today we have magnificent caves that are formed underground. Wow, isn't nature amazing? Before we continue our exploration of these caves, let's take time to understand the chemistry that is responsible for this process of cave formation. Dolomite contains the compound calcium carbonate. This substance won't dissolve in pure water we therefore say it is insoluble in water. So there must have been something else in the underground water causing the calcium carbonate to dissolve. Can you suggest what type of substance may have reacted with the calcium carbonate? An acid will react with calcium carbonate. Watch what happens when hydrochloric acid is added to a sample of calcium carbonate. Now the caves were not formed by hydrochloric acid, but carbonic acid. Carbonic acid is a weak acid that forms when carbon dioxide dissolves in water. Do you remember the chemical reaction for this dissolving process? It is carbon dioxide plus water react to form carbonic acid. Let's take a look at the following animation to see how this happens in nature. Carbon dioxide is found in the atmosphere. We also know that all living organisms release carbon dioxide during respiration. Carbon dioxide dissolves fairly easily in water, so when rain droplets fall through the air, they absorb some carbon dioxide. The rain filters through the soil and more carbon dioxide is absorbed. This acidic solution of carbonic acid filters through cracks and joints of the rock until it reaches the dolomite layer. Here, underground caves form with no large openings to the surface. Before we go back to the caves, let's summarize the main ideas so far. Carbon dioxide dissolves in water to form carbonic acid. And carbonic acid reacts with calcium carbonate in the dolomite. This causes caves to form. But what product will form in this reaction? Let's have a look at the equation. Calcium carbonate plus carbonic acid react to form calcium hydrogen carbonate.
notice that calcium carbonate is insoluble, written with the subscript S in the equation. But calcium hydrogen carbonate is soluble in water, written with the subscript AQ in the equation. When the caves first formed, the underground water carried the solution of calcium hydrogen carbonate away. But now, the water level in the cave has dropped. So the solution of calcium hydrogen carbonate remains on the rock surface. The temperature of a closed cave would be quite high, and so water would start to evaporate. This would cause the concentration of calcium hydrogen carbonate to increase. Large droplets of this concentrated calcium hydrogen carbonate would form. The higher temperature, however, has another effect on the solution. The calcium hydrogen carbonate starts to decompose and releases carbon dioxide and water. This leaves calcium carbonate deposited in thin crystalline formations that can look like icicles growing from the roof of the cave. Can you write down the equation for this reaction? That's right, it's calcium hydrogen carbonate. which breaks down into calcium carbonate plus carbon dioxide plus water. This process of depositing minerals in formations like these marks another phase in the formation of a cave. These cave formations have many different shapes. John, can you tell us more about them? Sure, Diasha. Let's do something even better. We're going to go on a tour inside the Sturkfontein Caves. There are many different types of cave formations. The most common are stalactites, which hang down from the ceiling of a cave. Notice the sea and ceiling and C in stalactites. This is a useful memory association. The other common formation is a stalagmite. These grow from the ground up. Here notice the G is common in ground and stalagmite. These form when water containing calcium hydrogen carbonate drips down onto the floor of a cave. When water evaporates, Carbon dioxide is released and leaves behind mounds of calcium carbonate. Have a look over here. Look what happens when a stalactite and a stalagmite meet. They form a column. Unfortunately, many of the stalactites and stalagmites in the caves have been destroyed by mining and through vandals. We also know that in these caves at Sturkfontein, they've restricted some of the access to some parts of the caves so that they can carry on looking for more fossils. When you go into a deep cave, you need to be very careful. Make sure you go with a guide. Some people have gone into caves like this one and not come out because the carbon dioxide levels in the caves is terribly high and they find they can't breathe. Some people have even died. I'm going to use the pH sensor to check the pH of the water here in the underground cave. Taking the reading, and I'm finding that it is giving me a reading of less than seven. That means that this water is acidic. The water is still corroding away at the dolomite. And so the caves are still expanding underneath the water level. Isn't that amazing?
More steps. <laughs> we look so sexy, anyway. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that drink. Here? Yeah. After all that walking through the caves, I need a cold drink. Wow, look at the fizz! Sure, isn't it amazing to think that the carbon dioxide that is in the cold drink is causing the fizz? Something as old as a cave formed because of carbon dioxide dissolved in water. And we can enjoy cool drink today because of carbonic acid too. I'm going to enjoy it. Cheers. Most caves have a very moist environment. Why is it necessary to limit the number of people visiting caves? Explain your answer using chemistry. I hope you enjoyed our visit to Stokefontein. And if you get a chance to visit a cave, always remember the caver's motto. Take nothing but pictures, cave softly and leave no trace of your visit. Till next time, goodbye.